What is up everybody? Welcome back to Case Digital. My name is Zach. And in today's video, we are answering the question of how do I iterate through a list with index, with using an index in Python. Now I've created a video before on where I talked about just how you can iterate through a list. And I think I used part of this um, using an index as part of that, but I wanted to expound upon that because in that I kind of focus on more on using loops like while loops and for loops. And so I kind of want to have this video, you know, kind of talk more about the benefits of using it with when you have it, when you're in need of an index. And so let's hop right in and start talking how we can iterate through this list using an index in Python. So I kind of want to show you basically two different ways that you can iterate with index um, or iterate through a list with an index in Python. The first one is kind of be kind of be more of the naive approach, the one that everyone kind of uses in the beginning. Um, that's using range. And so you can do like four i in range, and then you just need the length of the list, and you say my list, and then. Right here, now, every time, you, this is just gonna be a, a number. I is just gonna be a number from zero to the length of the list, um, or to the index before, or to the last index of the list. Because um, range technically is, uh, it doesn't include the last number, so basically it'll go from zero to length minus one, which is the last index of the list. So. Long story, but essentially it'll go from one to eight in this case. <laughs> but when I do this, if I print this out, I get, um, if I print this out, I get index and then I say I and then value and then I'll do, actually I'll just make this an F string because this will be better. I and now say value is equal to my, my underscore list and then index it through I. So right here, this will show me the, the value of i and then the value of i, the ith value of the list. So if I run this, what you'll see is I get, you know, I printed out the original list and then I say index of zero is equal to value one, which is right there, it just shows us that. And then index of value one, or the index of one is the value of two and so on and so forth until we get to the, the bottom. Now, um, this is pretty powerful because right here in this, you have the ability to use the index as well as to get the value. Um, and if you know, for example, two lists are of the same length, this is an example that I use sometimes. It's like you're using two lists together and you know that they're, you, and you know for a fact and you've probably put some if checks in there and know that they're the exact same length. You can basically do this syntax and then loop through both of those um, at the same time using one for loop, which will help you in performance wise and whatnot. And so it's pretty powerful when you have the, the index value because then you can just call and get the value at that index um, in the list by just doing something like that. So that's the first method that I kind of want to show on how you can do using index and looping through. And now I want to show you uh, probably one that I use the most because I don't typically use I in range uh, a lot um, because of some built-in functions that I want to talk about right now. So the method that I typically use when I kind of iterate through lists with an index or with the index um, is basically using the for in method. Um, this is one that you, if you follow my channel, is I when I when I use lists, I typically do this a lot. So I just say val in my list. But if you know, if you follow along and or you followed some previous where I talked about this, this will just give me the value, right? This will just give me one, right? It won't give me the index of zero and the value at one, like for the the range using for uh, in with range. Um, but here's the caveat: there is a built-in function that is called enumerate which will essentially give you a tuple. It basically does something like this, these two things, because it gives you a tuple of the index and the value at the same time. And now I can literally do this exact same function or this exact same thing here. Um, all I have to do is say I add index and then change this to val. And just like that, and I'm just gonna put right here, method two, and we'll do my little string trick that I always do to help print out. And this will basically, if they're not familiar with this, this will take this character, or this string, sorry, everything that would be in the string, multiply and repeat it basically 80 times. So it'll give us this long, um, thing of dashes, so I'll separate this. So if when I print this, I get something that looks like this. There's the method one that we just did with the original using range, the for loop with the range, there's the line. And then method two, it looks the exact same. I have the index value of zero, the value of one, index of one, the value of two, and so on. So that is basically how to iterate through a list in Python with the indexes. Oftentimes when I think when people refer to this like with, with an index, they refer to this because you're using the index value to then access the list um, and then iterate through it, uh, but oftentimes I just use this. I use enumerate, and then you can do you can stack things like I could do enumerate and sorted, and 
just like that, again, all you have to pass into the enumerate function is an iterable, which a list is, um, and then it'll do the exact same thing. So if I run this again, this time it'll actually be everything. All the values will be sorted. So now, rather than being what we had before at index one, at index zero being one, now with it being sorted, the index value, or the value at index zero is now zero, and then we go on um, from there. So I hope this has provided value. If it has, please hit the like button. And if, it, if you have questions about this or or, um, need any clarification or anything or have any thoughts that you think would be good to share with everyone, please leave them down in the comments below. Um, if you have any questions that pertain to additional information, I'll either, at, I'll either answer them there or I'll try and make an additional video about it to help you out and help you solve your problems on your coding journey. So until next time, keep on programming.